Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek Deep Thoughts Thing Coats with me, Phil the Glacial Geek. Uh, today, I am going to be, uh, I guess I'll go over the project I'm going to be working on. Uh, I have these old metal uh, scouts, as you can see, uh, but they are close combat and bolt, uh, bolt pistol scouts, which I have found less use for in my list. So I want to turn them into bolter scouts like I did with this guy here. So what I'm going to be doing... Uh, during this is actually just kind of basically chopping off their close combat weapons and replacing them with various bolter pieces that I have uh, found that I've got lying around. So we'll see which ones work and which ones don't. That's kind of the project I'm going to be working on. I'm trying a little bit different. I know it's not a thin coat, but it, uh, it might get a thin coat of blood if I cut myself. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to be working on. The, the topic that I'm going to be talking about today is something that's uh, hitting very close to home with me. Uh, this week is uh, how do we learn from a really bad loss? Uh, so as a lot of you may know or some of you may know, I don't know who follows me on Facebook, uh, but essentially this last weekend I took part in a, a tournament uh, at uh, Siege of Augusta. It was a ton of fun. I had a blast and uh, there were a lot of really good players, a lot of, a lot of fun, really cool uh, competitive lists. And I was using it as a uh, preparation. I was using it as a preparation to uh, for LVO because I need to get the list for LVO done uh, by the end of the week because there's a, the all the lists are due by uh, by Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. So I've got to get everything uh, all set for my list. I'm going to be taking the LVO with me. So I had this new list that I talked about last time when I was talking about overthinking lists uh, that was way more uh, Ravenwing heavy than I'm usually than I usually run. It also had a knight, which is the first time I've run a knight at a at a tournament. Or I guess I ran it the previous week with a different iteration of this list, a 1500 point iteration of this list. Um, to pretty good success, uh, and it was Ravenwing and a knight Castellan, and I was pretty excited about it. I thought it was something very different for me. It didn't have Asriel. Um, and it, it was it was going to be fast. It was going to be hard hitting. Uh, it was going to have the punchy knight, so we can do punchy things. And I was excited about it all. I thought it was going to be a lot of fun. And uh, and we'll see what happens. You know, and then to see what happens, I wanted to use the Siege of Augusta as a prep for the tournament to, for LVO to see how the list actually performs. And if it performed as well as I had hoped it would do, then I could just lock it in and, and be ready to go off to uh, to LVO. So I got to Siege of Augusta, I got prepped, I did my first uh, first round, and my list did very, very well. I, uh, I ended up winning that one against some Space Wolves, and it was, uh, it did exactly what I would hope, I had I'd hoped it would do. Um, it did, you know, it performed admirably. I ended up, uh, I think, tabling him uh, by the end of it, and it was, it was, I mean, it was, it was real good. I killed six units that first turn. Um, which was pretty awesome. Everything, literally everything did what it was supposed to do. And it, it exactly, it operated exactly as I had hoped that my list would. So right off the bat, I was very excited for my list. I was like, all right, perfect. This is doing everything I'd hoped it would do. And now let's just see how the rest of this tournament goes. So the next uh, round <clears throat> for the tournament, I ran into, uh, I ran into a four night list and it had four knights, and it had the uh, the what are they called? The Rusty Seventeen, which is the Admech Min Battalion. So you had two engines here, and the three squads of uh, of um, what do we call it? Of uh, uh, Skatari Rangers, and uh, essentially it's like the it's like the loyal the loyal fifty the loyal uh, the loyal thirty two, except with um, less except with less models. Oh, I'm just gonna move this around over this way so you can see it a little bit easier. Uh, with less less models and it's with the admec and it's it's kind of in response to uh, the points reductions that they got in uh, the points reductions that they got when it came to um, what we call it with chapter approved that they got so people were trying it and um, the the guy I was playing I've played him before and he's a very good player and I've played him he he has some really beautifully looking look, beautiful looking knights um, and I knew this was going to be a tough matchup for my list. Like I said, I got a bunch. I had a bunch of Ravenwing, so I knew running into a whole bunch of knights was going to be uh, a pretty strong test 
for my list to see how I was going to do. And I knew that I would have to be able to handle a bunch of knights. Otherwise, I was going to have trouble going into... Didn't want to blow, didn't want to blow into the mic and then I go ahead and bang everything. Um, but essentially, it, I knew if I couldn't handle a whole bunch of knights in a list, then I was going to have trouble at LVO because... You know, odds are I was going to run into an all night or predominantly night list. So went into it knowing it was going to be a tough match, and it was a tough match. Uh, by the end of it, I had um, I think I had knocked him down to I'd killed I think three of his knights, maybe two two of his knights. Left him there with two uh, two knights left that were wounded, um, but uh, he just massacred me. So. Uh, he ended up with a win, and it was my first loss for the tournament. And I was like, all right, well, that was a hard counter. I knew that was going to happen, but on to the next one. So the next round comes up, and I face off against uh, Yanari List. Uh, it was Harlequins and... Uh, oh, no, no, no. This one was the... Uh, this was the... Uh, had... Um, whatchamacallit? Regular Eldar and Yanari uh, facing off against me. It had one of the Flyers... And uh, it was going to be, you know, it was it was Yanari. So it had the, the it had some uh, all the, all the different uh, bits and bobs that Yanari have. Um, but this one he had the the Wraith Guard with the D sides, and he had um, he had a flyer, and he had a uh, one of the the Hemlock flyer. So the Psyker one. He also had um, Dark Reapers. So he had a pretty strong strong list there. Uh, oh no, this wasn't Yanari, this was just straight up Eldar. Craft World Eldar uh, um, LA talk. So I faced off against them and uh, I had one round where he shot into my Black Knights with his D-size and I had four up in Volsay because I had done I had advanced and I failed uh, I failed all eight of my in saves against him. Even rolled again and it failed. So he died. They died real quick, um, and then I was left with uh, not much, not enough left in my list to really handle um, anything else beyond there. And he just kind of ran circles around me, uh, taking off what he needed, jumping onto objectives to grab him for the uh, for what he needed for the missions, and um, basically just causing a whole lot of trouble for me. And he ended up winning pretty handily. So at this point, I'm one and two. Um, I run into knights, which I'm going to see at LVO. I run into Eldar that I'm going to see at LVO, and the list hasn't really performed the way I needed it to. So, you know, you can find your excuses. You know, it's like, well, it's a whole bunch of knights. Of course, that was going to be trouble. Or you can make the excuse. It's like, well, it was, you know, if I had made some of those saves, things could have been different. Sure. But the fact is they didn't, and that's where I was left with. So third round comes along, and I end up going up against. Uh, who did I go up against with the third round? No, 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 that was the that was the third round. Fourth round comes around, uh, and I end up against orcs. So honestly, I thought my list was pretty strong against orcs. I, I had run them against the friends uh, orc list previously, and they had done a lot of work. There's a lot of deck in my list. It's got the two dark talons. It's got the characters. It's got a lot of lot of shooting. And I thought, I can handle the orcs. So he's got his big squad of Ludas. He's got the, like, nearly 90 boys. He's got, like, all of, like, the really hard-hitting orc units that you're expecting in a tournament list. So I thought, all right, I, can, I feel like this is good. I feel like this is, my list can handle this. It's really designed well to handle this. Let's do this. Go in there, um, and I just, I whiffed. I couldn't take out his Ludas until the end. Um, he had boys that were jumping, uh, to jumping to my flank and then jumping onto objectives that I just couldn't clear him off of. And I just, I got, you know, I got, I got taken out pretty hard. Uh, and my list didn't perform the way I wanted it to, wasn't doing the things that I wanted it to do and, um, just ended up losing. So, you know, at that point you sit back and you go, all right, well at this point I'm one in three on this list. And, you know, what are you going to do about it? You know, what, what's going to happen? So that was the end of day one of the tournament. Day two comes along. We only had one round, and I end up facing off against uh, Yunari. So this one was Harlequins, uh, Harlequins and Yunari. So he had um, the, he had the um, whatchamacallit, Haywire bikers. He had the Shining Spears. 
he had the um, the he had the whatchamacallit the guys with the the dark reapers he had all of the things ticked off a bunch of a uh, bunch of um, troops uh, the troops you know the the Harlequin troops uh, jumping around over there and uh, I was like all right this is gonna be a tough test you know but I think hopefully I can pull something out here we ended up fighting and it was uh, I mean it was a hard hard fought game at the end of the game there were four models on the tape no one, two, three, four, five models on the table. Unfortunately, none of them were mine. <laughs> at the bottom of turn six, or top of turn six, uh, he tabled me. And he was left with, I think, two Dark Reapers, a wounded uh, Skyweaver, a uh, wounded Yervrain, and a Troop Master. So uh, he didn't have a lot left, and my, my list did pretty well. It did a lot of really good killing, um, but it wasn't as... Um, uh, it, reacting to it wasn't it didn't it didn't do what I wanted it to in a lot of different ways it killed a lot of stuff which was good because I needed it to um, but at the same time I didn't feel like it really properly um, performed the way I had hoped it would or really honestly in the way that I needed it to uh, when it came to a lot of these things it wasn't fast it wasn't as fast as his list which meant that he could outmaneuver me uh, I didn't I, it, it was Elite, but not elite enough that it really they really just hammered home. It just it, it was it's kind of ended up being very much in the middle of no man's land when it came to the elite to not elite armies. Um, he managed to put seventeen um, mortal wounds onto my knight from the haywire for, uh, on the first turn. Uh, so you know you you sit back and you go wow that was a really tough match. It held in there to the end. But at the end of the day, I still lost. And I still lost the battle, you know, pretty handily uh, by that point. Even though there were moments when it felt like I was doing well, um, it didn't do well enough to get me the win. So I ended up with the tournament uh, one and four, which is, I mean, it's disappointing. Not going to lie. It's disappointing. I hoped that the list was going to do better. I also hoped to be able to come home from the weekend solid with the list, having had a lot of experience facing off a whole bunch of different armies. Uh, with that list and ready to go, ready to, uh, ready and raring to go to to really to just hammer it home for Las Vegas. Um, but that's not how it worked out. And because that's not how it worked out, I ended up realizing that this list was not going to work for me. So I kind of have to hit the ground, uh, hit back a base square one for my list, trying to figure out a list that's going to work for me for LVO. But before you can do that, you have to be able to take stock of what happened and why your list doesn't work uh, or doesn't do what you wanted it to do or didn't perform the way you wanted it to before you can really make any changes or make a new list that's going to perform any differently than the old one. So the initial reaction, like I said, and I think even when I was describing it here, a lot of the times the initial reaction is to pick out one or two moments during the game that didn't go your way and try to kind of blame it all on those on those situations. So like I said, failing eight invul saves, you know, really hurt me against the Eldar list. Um, but if I'm being honest, you know, that was four models that died there, you know? Four models that died, and out of the rest of my list, if it really was all up onto there... Then my list can't my list can't survive losing four models. If my list can't survive losing four models, and it's not just four knights, <laughs> then I'm in trouble. So you look back in there and you go, oh well, if the dice were different, it may have been a, it may have made a difference. But the fact is that my list couldn't react to losing that many and keep going on. So if that's the case, then my list needs work. You know, or if I'm going against the orcs, and there were times when, like my 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 dark talon flew over his uh, flew over his his ludas and shot into them with everything he had, and ended up killing I think one luda. Okay, well now all of a sudden I go, well if it's only going to kill one luda, you know, what am I left with? You know, with that situation, you know, yeah, the odds were that they should have killed more, but it didn't, and then the rest of my army couldn't handle the rest of his army with that situation occurring. And the fact is that LVO, I can't expect that everything's gonna go according to uh, the, 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 the preset rules of, of, of 
odds. You know, uh, any time that you run into these situations, all of the best players, all of the best lists operate under the assumption that not everything is going to go exactly as planned. Because if you operate under the assumption that everything is going to go exactly as planned, you're going to be disappointed li- almost literally every game. You know, there are some games where it just like everything clicks and it feels really great. But honestly, those kind of games you could win with any list. There's no use in making a list that's only designed to operate efficiently when everything goes its way. Because at that point, you're not really making a list, you're just hoping for good luck. And hoping for good luck is not how you win tournaments. That's not how you win just a single game is with that, you know? The way you work, uh, the way you win games, the way you win tournaments is by expecting that everything is gonna go wrong and that you still are gonna be man- be able to manage out, uh, eke out a victory with whatever scraps of luck that you have left. You know, and if your list can do that, then you're going to do well. So I look back on my list and I see what worked and what didn't work. And I think the fact is, is that I either, you either have to commit to a lot of these lists, the way it works is you have to commit to something. You have to commit to something. So either you're trying to flood the board like orcs with, with bodies, and then you have your hard hitting like Ludas that can be able to do the work that they need to, um, to really, to really attack a lot of their big heavy stuff or you're going for super elite that's going to be able to go and make uh an an impact that's going to make up for its points so uh, like for instance the four knight list you know you look at that you look at that army list and you know he's got what i think he had like what was it five nine nine units in the list you know um and they have to be able to they need to be able to work and do what they need and they may not do it every single game, but at the same time, they need to, on average, make up for their loss of, uh, make up for their points with that. And I looked at my list and I realized that the list I had and list that I was working with there um, wasn't, didn't really have a particular focus with that. So, you know, you turn around and you look at it and you go, well, it's either going to, uh, if if everything goes uh, if everything goes my way and my li- and and the dice are with me and everything's working out yeah my list could do a lot of work and it had done a lot of work on some of the games that I played with it um, like I said the first game of the tournament everything went my way um, the prep game that I had against orcs went my way you know and it lowered me lowered lower la, 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 it it lulled me into a false sense of of accomplishment with the list and with my gameplay. Um, that the fact is that it, that when dice didn't go my way, I couldn't keep up with it. And the, you know, at a tournament, you got to be able to keep up with it, either with gameplay or with um, some backup plans, or even with um, you know, or even with uh, with with the rest of the list. So you have to have redundancies. You have to have backup plans. You have to have an understanding of how things are going to operate. So. For me, for instance, on this list, if things didn't work out right and I didn't force the issue and I didn't cause my opponents to um, have to make uh, have to make tough decisions uh, as far as the as far as target priority goes, uh, as far as anything else goes, then suddenly my list wasn't able to hold up. It wasn't able to keep up with what was going on. So I look at that and I go, "All right, well, what happened in each of these games?" What did I need to happen that didn't happen? So let's look at the the Knights, Knights game. So I look at the Knights game and I sit back and I go, all right, well, um, I needed to do more damage early on in order to save myself. So I needed to keep those Knights off of my Knight and I needed to keep those Knights, um, with, uh, to keep those Knights from being able to just, you know, pick and choose how they just picked apart my list, um, which I couldn't do. Because the fact was that my the Ravenwing portion of the list, the Ravenwing portion of the list wasn't uh, durable enough, wasn't strong enough to be able to take those knights on head to head. So he was left with the ability to just wail into them uh, with his knights and then just pick apart my knight as he pleased. Um, so he did a really good job of uh, blocking movement to my knights uh, and did a really good job of making sure that he had. Uh, reaction. He had the ability to react to whatever I was throwing at him, um, and my my list d- just didn't give me the tools 
to be able to do that myself. And because of that, I was left with um, a bad situation, and I lost. He was a really good player with a really good list, playing it perfectly, and, you know, to be honest, my list couldn't keep up, and my gameplay couldn't keep up. So, you know, kudos. He won. I didn't, you know, I didn't lose that game. He won that game. But I look at how my list could have been different, and I think that um, there were certain units that did remarkably well. For instance, the Talon Master and Samael performed admirably for me uh, in that game, and it was that they actually took out a lot of points on those knights. They actually did the lion's share of the work, uh, taking off uh, wounds on those knights. Just the the amount of fire that they can put out there, <sighs> the fact that they're strength five and strength six on their weapons, AP minus one means that I'm knocking him down so that even if he has Iron Bulwark on his guy I'm knocking him down to the max that his invul save is um, I've got him taking 4 up saves and I'm you know wounding on 5's and 6's which is a lot better than a lot of other things that wound knights on you know just on 6's uh, so with that in mind I look back at that list and I go alright well those guys performed really well and surprisingly well actually to my uh, expectations and in so doing, it made me think, well, if they're going to do that well, maybe keep looking at see how they do for the rest of the, uh, in the rest of the tournament. So, um, and I, I, I don't know if you've noticed, I've skipped over the first game where I did super well because everything clicked. And like I said, any list, if everything's clicking and doing what you need it to do, you're going to be able to win. That's the way, that's kind of just how it works, you know, especially in 8th edition, uh, there are no lists that go undefeated. You know, there may be lists that go undefeated in a particular tournament from a particular player, but all in all, there's nobody out there that has undefeated lists. It just doesn't happen unless they're playing in a very small meta where it just they're able to their list is able to counter what everyone else has. At the big tournaments, there's no list that's completely undefeated, um, and that's because any day that you have a good game, any list can really do the work as well. But you can make your list better to be able to handle what you needed to do as the general. So I look at that that second game and I go, all right, well, the speeders did better than I expected against knights and the rest of my army did worse than I even expected against knights, even though I had very low expectations for them to start with. So I look at that and I go, okay, cool, that's interesting. So I go on to game three, which is when I was playing against the, the um, playing off against the uh, Eldar. And I look at it, and I look at the speeder guys again, and I go, huh, they did very well. They were able to charge into the flyer, they were able to get to where they needed to on the board, and when they got there, they had a lot of firepower to be able to unload on whatever it was. So even if you're going up against something that's a lot stronger than it, it's throwing so many dice that can, if they're working together, Samael and the Talonmaster, they're re-rolling hits, re-rolling ones to wound, they're working together and doing a lot of work. And the AP minus one takes a lot of people down to their invul saves. I don't know if you, if you notice it, a lot of them don't have invul saves that are surprisingly lower. You know, unless you're looking at a Terminator that goes from two to five, most people, most of them that have their, they'll have uh, three up armor and four up invul saves. A lot of these targets that you've got there. And that AP minus one just takes them down to that invul save. So it doesn't matter if you're AP a thousand, you would still be having that same invul save. So their weapons were doing what they needed to do. The mass amount of shooting that they could do helped to clear out uh, screens, it helped to clear out hordes, um, and it was it was doing a good job. So it was just wailed, wailed into his, um, his, his different squads. They were able to get to where they needed to, to do well, and put the hurt where it needed to. Again, my bikes did not perform the way they, I, I needed them to do. Um, they died too quickly they, without doing what they had to to put in the damage. Uh, and suddenly I realized, all right, well, then, you know, once again, the bikes aren't performing the way I needed to, them to do. My flyers uh, kind of failed me this game, uh, if I'm being honest. Uh, and they had kind of failed me in that second game against the Knights, too, because I'd used them to shoot over and try to get into some of his players, uh, players into some of his troops that he was hiding so I can get a kill. And they failed to kill something the first turn. Uh, second, like I said, and then from there they were getting uh, hurt. I think I need to really work on how I play them to make them a bit more effective, but um, it kind of failed me that first round. 
and the uh, second round, and they kind of failed me that third round as well, uh, not really doing what I needed them to uh, when I needed them to do it. So I look at that and I go, okay, well, interesting. Um, once again, the characters are doing well. They're doing what I need them to do, and they're um, and everything else is kind of failing me a bit with my the way my list is, and it's not doing what I wanted it to. Uh, once again, the knight either he would get into stuff and kill things but I had a couple times when he just failed miserably. I had one time when he charged into um, had him operate at top tier. He charged into a two man guardian squad and he charged into and a, and a, um, and a wounded uh, wave serpent and at the end of his fighting with splitting the fight, the shots and the attacks and the whatever saves they had, I didn't kill a single model in a full round of combat with a knight gallon. Unbelievable. Like, in my mind, it's like they should have, he should have just crushed both of them, and he didn't kill either of them, you know? Um, so I go, okay, well, my knight underperformed what I needed it to, um, but and my characters overperformed once again, and my bikes underperformed. Okay, so got that. Go on to the, the fourth round, and I ran into orcs. Once again, my flyers disappointed me. My bikes didn't do everything that they needed to. The characters performed very admirably, mowing down units left to right. And at the end game, they ended up just jumping along this line of, of, of big guns that he had and, and units. And was just able to mow through all of them, like, surprisingly well. Like, surprisingly well. So I look at that and I go, okay, once again, characters are doing well. Bikes uh, got... Caught up with a or with a squad of or the regular bikes got caught up with the squad of uh, a boys. The other one wasn't putting out enough output to really make a dent in a lot of these squads. Um, yeah, the AP minus three works really well against orcs, but it wasn't doing enough. I think they they ended up bringing uh, the one thing they did really well was they bring, brought they brought a a bone crusher like the, the the with the with the rolly thing on the front there like the the wagon thing uh, down to one wound uh, with a round of shooting, which was pretty good. Uh, my knight also kind of disappointed. He ran up, he killed a bunch of things, and tried to move maneuver around. But against orcs, like your knight is not your your main. It's not shouldn't isn't going to be your especially a punchy knight isn't going to be a, a whole lot of use to you. Uh, so I had him. He didn't do as well that game either. Uh, and a lot of times he would they would die. I, the knight would die before he was able to make up his uh, attacks, make up his his points worth. Uh, which for a list when you've got only one knight in it. He's got to do it. He's got to work. He's got to. He's got to earn his keep. And the knight gallant wasn't doing that for me in those those attacks. Uh, so, like I said, once again, characters did really well. So, move on to round five, and yet again, the this time list did more so what I wanted it to. Uh, nothing really got like, you know, really ham. He he went first, got up right in my face did a whole lot of damage, but at the same time, it didn't really wipe me out too bad. The bikes suffered really bad. I mean, they've got three up save if they don't get that invul on. Um, tough five is nice, but it's not, you know, game changing, especially when you've got Eldar that have a lot of the shuriken, which are strength six on a lot of those things. Uh, and he was able to just uh, beat into me and just winnow me down until I became a little less effective. Once again, the characters on the speeders did a lot of work. Um, my gallant did a pretty decent job getting into things. He got he got hurt really bad off the beginning. Uh, took 17 mortal wounds, like I said, from the haywire bikers. But the problem with the one knight is he becomes a very big target for that. So you have to sit back and go, well, I'm going to run into these again. Is it able to handle that when you've got the one knight? And the answer is probably no. You know, I was running as mechanicus, so I was able to to spend command point to have it operate as top tier. But at the same time, I'm operating. It, I'm spending command points to have it operate at top tier turn one, and it's like that's not super effective. It did really. It did some work. It did was able to kill through some things, which was good. Um, but once again, my my character speeders did a phenomenal job. Everything else did okay. The, the flyers did better this round that game than it had the other games. Um, but I, you know, looking back on it, I. I started to see a pattern develop. And this is what's important when you look back on these these losses is to see a pattern that develops. You know, a one-time thing, your dice failing you, not doing well, getting cold and and not and your opponent making a billion saves 
isn't the end all be all. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that that unit is, is garbage to you, it just gets thrown out. But when you start to see a pattern start to develop, that's when you can start to learn from these losses. So one loss, one game loss, isn't going to teach you a whole lot other than maybe some tactical issues that you had. Like against the Knight, Knights, there were some tactical things that I did wrong that I think could do a lot better, that I could have played it a lot better. But at the same time, that wasn't the deciding factor in how that game went. So you look at that and you see what pattern develops from this. And you start to see what did well, what didn't do well, why didn't it do well, and did it not do well because of circumstance, or did it not do well because uh, it's just not going to be effectively doing what you need it to do. So, like I said, I looked at that, and I, I started to put things together, and I started to, to kind of question, okay, so if that's the situation, if that's what I'm faced with, what can I do to either fix this list or change this list up completely to be a bit more effective? So I liked the idea of having a knight. It drew attention. It, it, it also was able to do a lot that uh, the rest of the Dark Angels I don't think are as effective at doing. But the knight gallant very often found himself caught up in the middle of things that he wasn't there to do. And he found himself... Uh, in a situation very often where he wasn't able to, to 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 really make a difference in a game that I needed him to. So I looked at that and I go, all right, well, if the Knight Gallant's not going to work, why not maybe the Knight Castellan? Because I looked at it and I realized with my the current list, the way I had it, I didn't have a lot of really strong uh, ranged shooting, and the Castellan brings that in, in heaps. So I thought, all right, let's try that. So I put started to work on, uh, came up with the idea that I might want to work with that. And then I looked at the rest of my list to see how it performed, and I started thinking about previous games and previous iterations of lists, and I suddenly came to the conclusion that those speeder characters are probably some of the best units that the Dark Angels have. And if I want to play Dark Angels, which I do, then that's what I need to really focus on. So I'm currently in the process of trying to formulate a list that has maybe three to four of them. So I have Samael plus maybe you know two to three Talon Masters to work together because uh, that combination of rerolls, uh, rerolling ones to wound, and ignoring cover are going to be phenomenal at clearing off screens. Uh, and along with the Castellan being there, being able to shoot things from a distance, he'll do a really good job of, of doing that. I'm also thinking about having in some Intercessors because of two up armor with two up in cover with uh, two wounds each is is pretty good. Range 30 is not bad. Maybe a good backline screen for my, my Castellan, um, along with a bunch of uh, scouts, which these guys might possibly make it into the list, uh, so that I could uh, essentially get a little bit more board control. I also think that I didn't feel like the, um, the, the Dark Talent was a complete loss because of a lot of what I was able to do. I think I need to work on uh, how I play him a bit more uh, to really to fully um, utilize him appropriately uh, and I think that's going to come so I think I'm going to have him in the list as well so I suddenly see a very different list than what I had which scares me going off to LVO without really being able to test it but at the same time I think it's going to be uh, I think it's going to be strong so we'll see what happens but that's the key to learning from these kind of tournament losses from these kind of situations is find the patterns and if the patterns are there, then that's what you need to figure out. So, like I said previously, I'd run a lot of the um, a lot of the the Hell Blasters with the Azrael bomb, which was super strong. And when they worked, they worked real well. Like they could delete units, they could kill knights in one go. But I suddenly saw a pattern that was evolving with them: is that I would I would lose games with them fairly often. Uh, and the reasons that would happen is that I would get outranged. I would get um, I would get outmaneuvered, and those two combinations in lists made it very difficult for my Azrael Hellblaster bomb to be able to be effective. So if an army came at me and got into range of what I had going on, I could I could do a real good job of, of, of handling it. But if they kited me around and they just kept me at range that I couldn't get into, if they just uh, outmaneuvered me, they were able to jump onto objectives that I couldn't get to, uh, out out positioning me so that I couldn't be as effective and couldn't do what I needed to do. 
And suddenly I'm left with a situation where it's like, all right, well, dang, what am I going to do in response to this? And the answer is, you know, either get fast or, or die. So that's why the Hell Blasters ended up out of my list for this uh, iteration. And then I look at this list and I had a lot more board control. I had a lot more ability to maneuver and respond, uh, but not as much as I had hoped. And some of the units that I had included in it to try to do this, the bikers especially, uh, weren't as effective at doing that as I had hoped they would be. And because of that, I realized that, well, maybe I need to uh, rethink what units I'm, I'm bringing with me uh, and putting into this list to, to be able to do that. Uh, so I realized the bikers just, they just weren't working for me. You know, I really wish I could get them to work. I don't know if it's just how I play them, whatever it is. And I said that before that, you know, me and bikes aren't, uh, that me and bikes aren't the, the, the best friends. Like we don't really work well together, but at the same time, if that's the case and that's what kind of showed itself at Siege of Augusta, I'm going to have to make a change to either have them do what I need them to do and do what they're supposed to do or not be in my list. Uh, and unfortunately, I think it's going to come down to them really not being in my list just because they don't, they're not able to do what they need to do. So uh, the characters really did work, really did a lot of, of what I needed them to. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to put a lot more emphasis on them because uh, like I said, if they were able to be surprisingly effective against uh, knights and they're surprisingly effective against hordes, those are the two big threats that I'm going to face, you know. Um, and if they've got the backing of, if they've got the backing of the 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 Castellan, I mean, I feel like they're going to do really well, you know. And I'll use, uh, I have to make sure that I use uh, my scouts very effectively to make sure that they're uh, not the closest model because they've got the character rule, which makes them a little bit more difficult to target, which is fantastic. <sighs> Um, and along with that means that I, I feel like I'm, I'm left with a lot more versatility uh, and ability to uh, work together. Um, I think I might be losing the, the Dark Shroud just because of the amount of points that he is. Um, and this kind of uh, list, uh, these, the, the speeders move faster than, than he does, uh, even when I'm advancing. Because they've got a 16-inch move and he's only got a 12-inch move, so I have to roll four inches on on his advances because uh, he doesn't have flat out uh, if they want to just keep if you want to keep him up with just their base movement um, and he's also a lot bigger becomes a lot harder to to operate so I think that the fact is I'm just gonna have to try to figure out something and figure out a way to have them work with the scouts uh, being out and about hiding in uh, terrain and buildings uh, to keep them closer uh, and keep the models closer than the character so that they don't end up um, getting shot up, the, shot off the board. Um, so, you know, I think that's what I'm left with and I think that's what I'm going to be working with. Uh, and like I said, it all comes down to finding those, finding those patterns in your games uh, to fix them. So you either use those pat find those patterns that you fix your gameplay or you find those patterns that you fix your list. Uh, certain units not performing the way you hope them to is it's it's important to identify what those are so like I said if you're you know if your units aren't doing what you want them to do either you're playing them wrong or they're not able to do what you want them to and either which of those means something's got to change you got to either change your tactics or you have to change your list and uh, I think at this stage when I was looking at the way things were what things were doing and how they were being effective you know my black knights need to be within 18 inches to use their plasma and that gets them too close to the enemy to really um, use their speed effectively um, when they get into close combat they're not super effective I know Corvus hammers seem really great but I mean in this edition they're their strength plus one so their strength five um, and their AP minus one uh, and they've only got two attacks each, except for the Night Master who has, or Hunt Master, he's got three. But it's still, because they're 38 points, which is still cheaper than they used to be, uh, which is great, uh, they're still not, they still can't put out what I need them to, to respond properly. So, unfortunately, they're going to be out of my list as well. So, that's what I'm left with. You find those, you find those, you find those, those patterns, you figure out if those patterns are the way you play them, 
Uh, and if it's the way you play them, are you willing to change how you play them? Or is it like a fundamental way that you just don't feel comfortable playing that's not going to work? For instance, if you're trying to run Tau and you tried to use them as very aggressive in-your-face units, odds are you're going to struggle. So at that point, you have to sit back and you go, do I change the way I play and, and get into more of a gun line situation where Tau really flourish? Or am I just so opposed to gun line situation that I need to figure out a different, maybe a different army, if not a different list. So that's what I was left with here, where it's like my, my, my bikers, I saw them, they weren't effective, and I looked at what could make them effective, and the kiting of the bikes, it becomes very difficult for me to really visualize how I would be able to play them properly that way, without getting, without thinking about how I get units into effective range, uh, it becomes hard for me to imagine that. So at that point, I go, well, if I can't see how I would be able to improve how to play them, then I, I, I can't have them in my list. They're not going to work well. Um, when I looked at the pattern that I saw with the Hellblasters, I liked the gameplay mechanic of that, where it's like you steadily advance on the enemy, you shoot at the things that come at you, and you kill things, you know? And you have responses for how you, you fall back out of combat if you get in close combat, how you respond with, with the characters that you have around there. And it all worked pretty well, but the situations when I lost, I realized that my there wasn't going to be a gameplay change that I could make to make up for that deficit. And if that's the case, then I have to change the list yet again. Uh, I looked at the Night Gallant. I love the Night Gallant. The idea of punching something in the face with that gauntlet is super fun. And throwing a vehicle, heck yeah. That's super cool. But it just wasn't able to perform the way I needed it to to be super effective. So you make a change to something else. And like I said, I haven't really played much with my with my ga with my uh, Castellan. I'm super excited too, it looks pretty cool. Um, my wife did a really awesome job putting on some uh, really cool um, uh, freehand stuff. So I'm very excited about that. And we'll see how it operates, you know? I think I'm gonna get, in, I'm gonna be going off to LVO with very little, if any, uh, practice with this list. So it's just a matter of, of seeing how it goes. But that's the reality of the situation. List has to be in, and it's got to be in. That's what I got to do. So that's what I'm tr I'm trying to talk about here is that you, there's there's two ways you can react to those kind of losses, which is I'm fed up and I'm just going to go. It's garbage. I'm not going to play anymore. Or you could respond and say, all right, well that that souped, but what can I do about it? And once you start looking at what you can do about it, look for the patterns, figure out if the patterns are you or if the patterns are your list. Um, if they are you figure out if you're willing to change it, and if not, then it becomes a list issue anyway, and you have to change the list to fit you. Um, if it ends up becoming a list issue, then you need to figure out what it is that worked well for you and what didn't work well for you, and then go from there. Move to strength, um, figure out answers, and look at the what your list can provide. So for instance, like I said, moving from the gallant to the uh, the Castellan, suddenly I've got some really strong DACA that can handle knights, that can handle vehicles pretty well. So I look at that and I go, okay, cool. That's what that does well. So the rest of my list needs to be able to handle hordes, because I'm going to run into orcs, I'm going to run into tyranids, I'm going to run into something that's going to have a whole bunch of little gribbly bodies that I'm going to have to handle. So I look at my list, my army, and I go, what can I do best to handle this? And I've got the, the Dark Talon that's always been my go-to for clearing hordes, uh, the character speeders are really good at clearing hordes, so I go, all right, well, those are things that haven't failed me as well as much as everything else, so let's try this and go forward. Um, I think after LVO, with the new bolter rules, things might change. I might have other options, you know, um, but this is kind of what I'm, I'm sitting at and, and seeing the way things are going, because LVO is not having the bolter rules, uh, the, the new beta bolter rules in there, because the, the rule came after their cutoff for new rules. So... That's what I'm left with, and that's the situation. You either have to grow or, or, or give up, and I'm not willing to give up, so I'm going to keep trying. So, like I said, I'm still working on that list. I've got till Friday. I'm recording this on Tuesday, uh, so I've got till Friday to make it happen, and if I can't make it happen, um, I mean, I will make it happen. <laughs> Something, one way or the other, I will have a list to go on Friday. Uh, so, yeah, these guys, uh, kind of going over it. I got some bolters on them. I don't know. They look They look decent, so... Um, we'll figure this out. I'll get these guys together, um, and and probably and then figure out painting all of the bolters and 
and make myself another, uh, like I said, uh, this bolter, the reason that one's painted already is that actually came off of my um, <clears throat> my company agent, the one with the banner. I I cut off his, he was a metal guy, and I cut off his bolter to put on a storm bolter because I wanted him with a storm bolter. So now this guy's got a, uh, a bolter here. So figuring all that out, I think it's pretty good. So um, let me know what you guys do to learn uh, to, to figure out after a loss. What's your reaction to, to losing? We've all lost. I don't want to hear anyone that tries to tell me otherwise. Everyone's lost. And what do you do to learn from it? You know, we, it's, it's, you learn from your mistakes. You don't learn from your successes, to be honest. Um, my, my father uh, used to own a photo store. And he used to tell people when they were learning, trying to figure out photography, uh, take a roll of film, take the pictures, look through them, figure out the ones that you really like, put them to the side, you're good to go. You know how to do that. But now look at the ones that didn't, that you don't like, that didn't come out the way you wanted them to, uh, and and figure out why. So was your was your exposure off? Was your focus off? What was off? Something was off to make this picture not work for you. Was it composition? And if any of that is the case, then how do you make it better? And you have to approach uh, 40k the same way. What went wrong? How do I make it better? And is the answer to that something that I'm willing to do? And if it is something you're willing to do, then you're good to go. If it's not something you're willing to do, then you have to find a new path to make it happen. So that's the answer that I have. Let me know what you guys do and let me know what you think about all this. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to make a list that'll do a lot, a little bit, but at least, actually I want to do a lot better than one in four <laughs> of an LVO. So hopefully I'll have a list that'll do a lot better than one in four at LVO. Uh, so I hope you guys have all enjoyed this. I certainly have. I have been Phil the Glacial Geek as always. And until next time, have fun.